That man isn't playing checkers against a computer, is he? Sure, and it plays pretty well. When Arthur Samuel began working on his checkers playing program in 1952, the odds were stacked against him. The computer he was trying to program on was still unfinished. He was working essentially alone, and he had to make all of his progress between midnight and 8 in the morning when he could get access to computers. It wasn't clear that the program he was attempting to write would even be possible with the machinery of the time. Claude Shannon had tried to write a chess playing program a few years earlier and had given up without making much progress. But after many years of work, he did it. Through only a few hours of self-play, the computer could get good enough to beat a mediocre human player like Samuel himself. In 1956, he debuted the program on television, and in 1959, he published Some Studies in Machine Learning Using the Game of Checkers, the paper I believe all computer scientists should read. This work constitutes the foundation of the field of reinforcement learning and is a crucial milestone in computer science at large. I believe that reading this paper is essential to reliving the experience of the field's creation. Samuel investigated two strategies for machine learning, a term he coins in this paper, a rote learning program and a generalizing program. The rote learning program uses a hard-coded scoring metric that evaluates a board position by searching through all the possible moves a few moves into the future and calculating the piece and positional advantages available to the program. It's really only learning insofar as it's recording the score calculations of each position so that if it encounters that board state in a future game, it doesn't have to repeat the same calculation. With this method, and having 53,000 board positions and their scores stored, Samuel's program could play at a level of a quote, better than average novice, particularly excelling in the early and late games. Let's see what it's printing out now. But the generalization learning method is Samuel's true contribution to the field of machine learning. Samuel was still hard coding the features, like the presence of a certain arrangement of pieces that were weighed against each other to evaluate a board position. But now the program was learning the scoring function on its own, refining the weights given to each of the dozens of features over many games of play. He used two versions of the program, which he named Alpha and Beta. While Beta's scoring function stayed frozen, Alpha's changed automatically using a method we now call temporal difference learning, a strategy of learning by refining one's predictions about a certain value over time. Here's how Samuel described the temporal difference learning method. We are attempting to make the score calculated for the current board position look like that calculated for the terminal board position of the chain of moves which most probably will occur during actual play. Of course, if one could develop a perfect system of this sort, it would be the equivalent of always looking ahead to the end of the game. The nearer this ideal is approached, the better would be the play. In my opinion, this idea alone qualifies this paper for inclusion in CS191. The idea of temporal difference was expanded upon 25 years later by Richard Sutton, who literally wrote the book on reinforcement learning, and whose PhD dissertation directly builds on Samuel's work. In turn, Sutton's work was refined into cue learning and then deep cue learning, a core technique used in self-driving cars and DeepMind's AlphaGo. Reinforcement learning underlies some of the most exciting modern software developments, and there is a clear intellectual lineage tracing back to Samuel. Who's that watching? He's Dr. A.L. Samuel. A lot of the good ideas that Samuel implements in this paper were in the air at the time. Behaviorist psychologists like B.F. Skinner were talking about rewards and punishments. Optimal control theorists like Richard Bellman were researching how to choose the best policy in a known environment. And Claude Shannon was theorizing about game playing programs. What makes this paper worthwhile is that Samuel made these ideas work, getting through the practical questions of how to encode past games, how much knowledge to hard code and how much to leave up to learning, how many moves forward to look, and many other questions answerable only by years of experimentation. And when he eventually pulled off what the academics had been speculating about, the wider world took notice, with Samuel's television appearances causing IBM stock to jump 15 points. I think this was a monumental achievement, but you don't have to take my word for it. Russell and Norvig call it, quote, probably the earliest successful machine learning research. Sutton and Bartow call it, quote, a seminal work that is, quote, widely recognized as a significant achievement. And John McCarthy himself wrote that, quote, from 1949 through the late 1960s, Samuel did the best work in making computers learn from experience. This paper is worth reading because it is a testament to the dogged perseverance of its author. It is a seminal text in the field of reinforcement learning and it is a milestone in the real-world achievements of artificial intelligence.
Not only was Samuel's program smart, as many before it had been, but it learned to be smart on its own and surpassed the abilities of its creator, striking an empirical, highly publicized blow against the idea that computers had no pretensions whatsoever to originate anything.